Oh, yeah. <laughs> Hi, I know you guys, but I do have a question that I don't know the answer to. And I want to know, um, what are your earliest memories regarding Star Wars, or how, and I know you know, there's a bit of an age difference between you, so you were at different points in your life when Star Wars came out, but what was your first Star Wars experience or memory? Can I take this? I think I know yours. I think I've heard this. Well, there's, there's 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 actually two. I had I had heard a bit of a buzz. I I love science fiction. Growing up, I read science fiction novels and played with science fiction toys. Tom Corbett Space Station is one of my favorites. So I grew up in the '50s, and there were these cheesy TV shows and space movies. Okay, so I had picked up a little buzz about Star Wars, and and actually my first collectible. Um, while I was a reporter at the Wall Street Journal, uh, Lucasfilm and Fox sent out a full-color brochure to mainly to theater owners and people who book movies to try to get them interested to play Star Wars. Not that they convinced anybody. Star Wars opened 32 theaters in the U.S. And I remember that the guy who covered the film business in uh, L.A. looked at it and threw it away. And then uh, when he left for the day, I sort of tiptoed over to his wastebasket and pulled it out. Well, my first memory of Star Wars couldn't have been better because Bob and I were invited to a screening that they did for journalists. They finally realized in May of 1977 that they had something special on their hands. They weren't sure until they did a screening at the North Point Theater in the beginning of May and did a questionnaire very strange questionnaire, but they realized, wait a second, we may have some bottled lightning here. And we saw the movie on the back <coughs> lot of Fox two weeks before it opened, before all of the hype, and we had the same reaction that everybody else did when the Star Destroyer went overhead, and we all went like this, <laughs> and we all laughed at ourselves. And I was hooked from then till now. So, um, the 77, when the Star Wars came out, uh, my family had just moved from South America to Canada. Uh, so we were still acclimating to the culture, and I was, I'm going to out my age, I was only like two, three years old, no, two years old when Star Wars oh, came out. Oh, wrong shit, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I kind of missed, yeah, sorry, I kind of missed a lot of the, uh, you know, the, the theatrical excitement, but just being that, a kid at that age, you absorbed it because, you know, older brothers and other kids in the neighborhood had the toys, had the comics, had whatever. So it's weird. Like, while I acknowledge now that Star Wars was some, is absolutely something special, as a kid growing up with Star Wars around you, you don't re actually kind of take it for granted. It was just like you had nothing to contrast it, it against. There. It was always there. It was what your childhood was. So I, I'm not 100% sure if this memory is accurate. I know, uh, again, the toys were a big part of it. I would hang out with my brothers and their friends who were like 10 years older than I was, and I was at their, at a friend's place who would have been 14 to my three, and they were all drawing, and they were drawing Star Wars stuff. And they were drawing Darth Vader's TIE Fighter, and I took a stab at drawing it. And as a kid who was only three or four, I couldn't draw it very well. And I seem to strongly remember them making fun of me for not being able to draw well. And at that time, I took it upon myself to learn how to draw as well as possible to show them someday. <laughs> and so I would keep looking at these Star Wars books and drawing and drawing and drawing. And I eventually became a, a fairly good artist for my age. And that led to a career in advertising and visual effects, which led to a contact with Lucasfilm, which led to a job where now I'm working with making, making Star Wars. So it just seems like a very odd thing. Being slighted as a four-year-old <laughs> may have actually led me down this path. So I don't know. And, and by the way, Paolo is a wonderful artist, and um, I could barely draw a lightsaber, so it's sure <laughs> it didn't help me, but, uh, but Pablo has done online comics, and Pablo, uh, Pablo can do just about everything, I think, so, uh, and, and Star Wars inspired us all, and it, 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 it continues to inspire. One of the things I love to do at Rancho Obi-Wan, we, we give tours to um, school groups, we give, uh, and we always talk about creativity. And sometimes we have a member of the 501st there, and they talk about costuming and how Star Wars led them into costuming and how they create their own costumes. 
we're going to have a, a school tour coming up in a couple of weeks. We're going to have somebody from ILM and how Star Wars, how he grew up with Star Wars and then how Star Wars affected him in getting into the movie industry. But we have astronauts who say they were inspired by Star Wars. It's not just getting into the movie business or writing books or anything else. Star Wars inspires creativity, whether it's writing poems, whether it's drawing, whether it's becoming a scientist and exploring. Um, that's, that's the great thing about Star Wars. It is so open-ended and, and inspires that kind of creativity. One more question. Um, Pablo, uh, you're doing your New York Comic Con thing. Uh, you're going to do Rebels. Any chance you can just tell us what you're going to say? Because <laughs> I'm not going to. Sorry, man. I ain't got the dough to go to New York. <laughs> I don't either. I tried. I tried. I tried. He wouldn't tell me. And then, and then my, my question point. for Steve after, obviously, yeah. after Pablo gets done telling us everything. Um, who's your? Who do you turn to for expertise? Like you're you're known as the expert collector, you've got everything, but when you gotta find something or you're not even sure about like you use the description two different dark haters, who's your expert? Well, regarding Rebels, so um, for those who don't know, it's our new animated show that's in production. It's gonna come out about a year from now on Disney XD and Disney Channel. Um, you know, there we people are wondering what am I gonna do at, at New York Comic Con. We, we can, I'll tell you this much, there's not going to be any footage because we actually, we're a year out, there, there is no footage yet. But there's a lot of art, so I am going to show some of the art. And the focus of the panel is to talk about the bad guys on the show. Basically, we're not ready to talk too much about the heroes yet, but we're going to talk about the villains. We're going to talk about what it means for there to be an empire at this point in the timeline yeah. and what it's all about. But beyond that, I can't get into any details. I swear to you, I was d working on the keynote just before I came here. So it's still being put together. Um, there will be behind the scenes video, and as per tradition, I would expect to see some of that on StarWars.com after the panel is done. But how soon after, and whether or not it's the same thing, I don't know. That's, that, someone else makes that decision. But uh, our intent is to make it special for the people who are at New York Comic Con, so they gotta feel that they've seen something that no one else does, and then some version of it will get off on, so. I appreciate that, thank you. I'll tell you what, if you hold him, I will steal his iPad and maybe we can get it. But it's not finished yet, so I don't think. Um, a lot of people think that, that large collectors of anything are always rivals with people who collect similar things, and, and they'll stab you in the back, and they'll go behind you to you know, get something in an auction, or not tell you about something that they know you're looking for. And it, it, it just doesn't exist in Star Wars, and people find this hard to believe, but I'm friends with a lot of high-end collectors, and, and friendship is the word. These are people that I can turn to when I don't know something, and there's a lot I don't know. There are people who have spent years researching the process, tracking down every original Kenner employee. Yeah, they want to try to buy stuff, but they also, they're as fascinated by the paperwork and the process and how these toys were made as they are about actually having a collectible. So there is this whole group of Star Wars collectors across the world that I can turn to with a question that they are really happy to answer. So yeah, we all have our godfathers. Now I don't know who Pablo would turn to except maybe George. Um, but. Um, but, uh, and Leland, obviously, you know, Pablo and Leland work together very closely and, and they share a lot. Um, but, but there are tremendous resources for someone like me, which is fantastic. Plus, friendships. I mean, I can't tell you the opportunity that Lucasfilm gave me for 15 years to travel around the world to meet Star Wars fans literally all over the world has led to scores of real and continuing friendships. And it's just, that's the best part of it. Thank you. Uh, do we have any other questions? Yeah, one more question. Would you like to go? Why did you end the Clone Wars? Oh. Why did we end the Clone Wars? <laughs> this is the man that ended it. <laughs> It's a, it's a funny thing. When, when George first started Clone Wars, he said, I just stuck off the top of his head, like, we're going to do about 100 episodes. 
all right. <laughs> Nobody really believed them, but okay. And then five seasons later, they got to 108. And they found the, the, what was thought to be around the 100 mark is, was when Dave Filoni, the director, and George had finally said, well, we're going to address what happens to Ahsoka. We're, we're going to figure that out. We're going to tell that story. And they did, and that's how the fifth season ended. And so they had set out their objective to do 100 episodes and, and figure out what happened to Ahsoka. But George has this way of, you know, if he likes doing something, he's going to keep doing it. And, and, and whether or not it, it finishes to a plan, it's like, no, I, yeah, I still like doing this. So th they had more stories beyond that that they ended up doing. But as it was, the five seasons was where the cutoff was as far as it being a broadcast weekly t TV show. Uh, and that's where that ended. But the production cycle for Clone Wars was this weird thing where they, they knew... They were making episodes a year before they were actually airing. So even though season five ended the TV run, there are more episodes that they have completed that go beyond that point that are going to come out, I'll, I'll say soon, I don't know when, but there's, there's more episodes to come with Clone Wars. But everyone was kind of like, they, they felt like they had finished the story with Ahsoka, they'd finished the story with the clones, there's a few extra ones to come, but there's a real interest in telling a new story closer to the original trilogy, and that's going to be Rebels when that comes out next year. Excellent answer. Yeah. Uh, thanks for coming out. Uh, we have books in the back on those little carts. Uh, if you want to get a signature, uh, just go ahead and pay in the front, and then come line up back here. We also get a big hand to Pablo and Steve for. And also, uh, another big hand for the uh, Pablo Purse. Yeah. Being in those costumes for an hour <laughs> is not an easy thing. <laughs> we got one more question. While you're doing that, if you have another question, you can always just come up to us and get asked. And, and yeah, feel free to take uh, some of these Rancho Obi Wan uh, cards if you'd like. Okay. Any other?